It is 10 minutes before 8 o'clock and a warm welcome back. International journalist, poet and author Dr. Maitha Allison is currently in the country for the Malcolm X and Afro-Palestinian Solidarity Public Conversation. The event took place last week and its main focus was on Malcolm X's support of Palestine in the, in the 1960s, which comes as a build-up to the South African-Israeli Apartheid Week campaign set to take place from the 12th to the 18th of March. And for more on this, I'm joined in studio by Dr. Allison. A very good morning and welcome. Good morning. Thank you for having me. This is such an honor. Ah, absolute pleasure. Now, let's uh, first start with you. Uh, what does this trip mean to you personally? In South Africa, I feel like, first of all, I'm pinching myself. I couldn't even imagine that I'm going to be here. I am here. I was here to bring Malcolm X's message and the message of black Americans and African diasporic people's support and solidarity with the state of Palestine, with Palestinian peoples and recognizing and exposing the occupation of Palestinian people and violation of their human rights. So to be here in a place that has struggled through apartheid and Palestinians definitely see South Africa as a ray of hope in terms of a possible future beyond their own occupation has been stunning to have conversations around what apartheid was like, people's personal stories of growing up in townships, and then some who traveled to Palestine and said, this is too familiar. Mm -hmm. And then what does it look like? What are the conversations afterwards? I mean, I'm here in this moment when land expropriation and conversations around what reclamation looks like yeah. are happening. And this is, this is future tense for Palestinians. And I guess the Black Lives Matter uh, conversation or message reverberates across continents. Yes, yes, definitely. And actually, in the summer of 2014, when the invasion of Gaza happened, it was called Operation Protective Shield, it overlapped with the Ferguson uprising, which was in response to the murder of teenager Michael Brown, a young black teenager who was targeted just for simply walking down the street. There were so much resonances between both movements. There was actually transnational conversation that happened and that fomented a black Palestinian solidarity that I, I took a delegation of, I co-organized a de delegation of Black Lives Act matter activists to go to Palestine 2015 and that was okay. the direct result of having this moment of systems of oppression overlapping and then people resisting them, mm -hmm. surviving them. You also had a, converse, had a conversation with uh, Natalia Molebazzi about Malcolm X and the Afro-Palestinian Solidarity. What came out of that? What a truly amazing night. Both of us shared poetry. I started with the conversation around Malcolm X's support for Palestine, which a lot of people don't know, started from a trip that he took to Gaza in 1964, September 1964. He was there for just two days, toured refugee camps, met with political officials, but actually had a conversation with a poet who affected him deeply because this poet narrated his fleeing of a massacre in 1956 in okay. Gaza. And so cool. Malcolm took that and he wrote op-eds in Egyptian Gazette, which is an English language newspaper, and then used that to understand multiple systems that were in conversation with each other. He was even talking about S South Africa, Congo, Palestine and the U.S. as connected systems of oppression globally. And so we talked about that and I gave that angle. And Natalia brought, uh, brought Malcolm X back as a pan-Africanist who is committed to all of the continent. But also we did talk about Afro-Palestinians who do exist and are always forgotten in Jerusalem and have struggled with Palestinians as they identify with being Palestinian mm -hmm. there as well. So we went through that history. We had necessary conversation about what it looks like for Palestinians to ask for solidarity. Does it mean that we have to, I'm not Palestinian, but does it mean that Palestinians and Arabs have to really do a check on our own anti-blackness and do more when it comes to extending our own solidarity with yeah. African peoples, African continent and the diaspora? Having read and studied uh, quite extensively on Malcolm X project and having uh, conducted public conversations, uh, just share with us some of the interesting facts that you stumbled upon. Oh, wow. So um, Malcolm X, like I said, was very much a pan-Africanist. And I learned about pan-African decolonial history through Malcolm X's speeches. So mm -hmm. he frequently referenced the Mau Mau uprising in Kenya against the British colonial forces. As I said, he talked about South Africa. Patrice Lumumba was a great inspiration yeah. to him. And he met, with, um, he met with Fidel Castro in Harlem. So he was very much part of this, what he called the dark world consciousness. 
And I was stunned by that. I was also stunned by the fact that we narrate Malcolm X as somebody who did the Hajj, the pilgrimage to Mecca, and mm -hmm. then afterwards transcended issues and notions of race. But actually, that wasn't the case. He went there and he was even more invigorated to defend and to speak out on behalf of black Americans yeah. and connect their struggle internationally to all other dark peoples and the African continent. Now, uh, just briefly, the Israeli uh, Apartheid Week campaign focuses on Israel's uh, apartheid policies uh, towards Palestine. Uh, I mean, uh, some of the regime's discriminatory policies against Africans. What does this campaign mean to you? Oh, it, it is the absolutely most peaceful way that we can have a large impact in terms of shifting not only the discourse but actual conditions of people's occupation and violation of human rights on the ground in Palestine and also my country invests billions a year in military aid to the state of Israel that means my tax dollars are going towards the murder the killing the bombardment mm -hmm. of kids of ch of mothers of people that never that, that had this happen to them. And so in the same sort of way, we're asking, as the 1970s, 80s campaign to divest from apartheid South Africa was successful towards bringing okay. down and shaming the South right. African apartheid government, this BDS campaign will do so with the apartheid state of Israel. Jeez, we need an hour for this conversation. <laughs> and thanks for the lecture, though. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for having me. All right, that is uh, international journalist, poet, and author, Dr. Maita Allison. And she's speaking to us about her visit to South Africa and a public conversation and evening of poetry with uh, Natalia Molibatsi titled Malcolm X and Afro-Palestinian Solidarity.